Kia Year 12 and 13. This is question 3 from the second batch of practice questions for the trig internal. So in this one we're given two functions, the red one and the blue one, and we're asked for what possible values of x do the functions have the same value. So what we need to do is figure out the equations for each function, equate the two functions and solve that equation. And then we'll get general solutions. Um, but I'm also going to go on and get particular solutions. So just from looking here, let's see what we're after for particular solutions. Well, I could either pick a domain between 0 and 2 pi and find the intersections there, or I could just look for the ones that are actually shown in this picture. So if I do that, I can count off how many solutions I need to find in the end. So here's one here, one here, one here, one up here, one here. What are we up to? One, two, three, four, five and 6 here, so 6 between 0 and 2 pi, and then there's another one here just after 2 pi. So let's start off by um, figuring out the equations and showing all of the features. So when we do this, we want to be pretty systematic about it. We're going to start with the blue function. So the blue function, I can choose either a cosine model or a sine model, but if I choose the cosine model, I'm not going to have a horizontal shift because we can see that the maximum is here, at x equals 0. So that's good. So let's start with the blue one. Um, so the horizontal shift is 0. All right, now the first thing I always work out is the midline, and that's going to give me the vertical shift. So the top of the function is at 2, the bottom's at negative 4. So we find the average of those two numbers. That gives me negative 1. So my vertical shift is equal to negative 1. Remember that the model we're trying to fit here is this, y is equal to a times cosine of b times x plus c plus d. So we know that c is equal to 0. The vertical shift is d, so d is equal to negative 1. Right, and um, what's left? Let's have a look at the amplitude, because that's pretty easy. So my function um, goes from the midline at negative 1, it goes up 3 and down 3. So if we want to do that mechanically, it's the top number, take away the bottom number to get the distance, and it's half of that distance, so the amplitude's 3. So that gives me A is equal to 3. The last thing we've got to find is B. So just from having a look at, all we've got to go on is, is the picture. And the safest way to do this to figure out what one period is, is to go, well here's my starting point here. Let's look at what happens at 2 pi. So 2 pi is the normal period of a cosine function. And you can see that in this case, I get two full cycles between 0 and 2 pi. So that tells me that the frequency is 2, and the period from here to here, so one full cycle, is pi. Right, so that gives me finally a value for b, which is 2. So the blue function is, uh, what am I going to call it, I'll call the blue function g of x, and it's 3 cos of 2x, take away 1. So that's that one done. Let's look now at the red function. So we're going to start off by looking at the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. And again, if we choose wisely, we won't have a horizontal shift. And to do that, I'm going to use a sine model. You don't have to use the same type of model for the two curves. And here it makes more sense to me to do a sine model. Right, so my starting point is going to be at 0. So for this one, we'll call it f of x. And... Um, there's no horizontal shift. So f of x is going to equal a sine of b times x plus c plus d. So c equals 0. What's the midline? This is a, a nice easy one with no vertical shift as well. The top value here is 5. The bottom value is negative 5. 5 midline is 0. D is equal to 0, no vertical shift. 
Remember, we want you to be talking about the features, so it's important that you don't write just D equals zero. You need to write that there is no vertical shift, no horizontal shift. Communicate what you're thinking clearly. Um, the amplitude is five, right, because it goes up five here and down five to the bottom. So the amplitude's five, A is equal to five. Let's look lastly at the frequency and the period. So we're starting at zero. Let's see what happens by the time we get back to two pi. Well, I've had um, one full circle to here, and one full cycle to here, another one to here, and a third one to here. So the frequency is three, and the period is one full cycle. So it's the normal period, two pi, divided by that frequency. That gives me b is equal to 3. So we're ready now to write that function. We've got g of x, and we can get f of x. So f of x will be 5 sine of 3x. So to find where they're equal, we have to equate those two functions. We need to solve 5 sine 3x is equal to 3 cos of 2x minus 1. So when I look at something like this, here's what I think about. I can see that I've got a double angle in here, and I've got a choice with cosine of three double angle formulae. Now this is the third question on quite a tricky worksheet, so I'm not going to go through the double angle options very, very slowly. But just remember that you can pick any of those three, and which one you pick will affect how much work you end up doing. On this side, I've got sine of 3x. Now this is a bit of a pain because it's not a double angle formula. But what I can do with the sine of 3x is split it into sine of 2x plus x. So I'm going to have a bunch of work to do here and a whole bunch of work to do here. I'm not doing a proof. I don't need to go from the left to the right. So the way I did this was to first of all work on the left hand side, then work on the right hand side. And my goal is to end up getting both sides in terms of either sine of x or all in terms of cosine of x. And then it's going to be easiest to see what to do from there. There are probably some other ways that you could do this. And if you've got another way that's a good way, I'd love to hear it. So chuck it into the comments or email me. So let's start by just um, taking 5 sine of 3x and getting that into something as a function of sine x. I'm going to use my compound angle identities and go 5 sine 2x plus x. So that gives me 5 times sine 2x cos x plus cos 2x sine x. And I'm going to decide to get everything in terms of a sine function, unless something really obvious happens along the way to make me change my mind. So I've got 2 times sine x cos x, and then I've got times cos x again, so it's going to be cos squared x plus 1 minus 2 sine squared x times sine x. Expanding that out gives me this, 10 sine x cos squared x plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x. I'm just about there because it's very easy to replace a cos squared with a sine squared. I'll use the Pythagoras identity. So it's going to be 10 sine x times 1 minus sine squared x plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x. That gives me 10 sine x here. I've lost something though. I've lost a 5. That should be a 5 there. And that should be a 10 there. Whoops, that's not very good. Okay, so just be careful that you've got to expand out with that 5. Okay, so popping that back in. Let's just clean that up. There, that's where I'm up to. So now I've got 10 sine x here and 5 more here. So that gives me 15 sine x minus 10 sine cubed x minus 10 sine cubed x. Right, collecting up like terms gives me 15 sine x minus 20 sine cubed x. 
So what you could do if you want to check that you haven't mucked up is you go to your graphics calculator and you draw two graphs. First of all, draw the graph of 5 sine of 3x. And you should get um, the either the red or the blue. I think the sine one, yeah, that, so you should get the red function. Right, so that's a good thing to do earlier on to make sure you haven't mucked up what the two functions are. And then draw this one. You should get exactly the same thing. So now we're going to work with the right-hand side. And then we're going to equate them. So 3 times cos of 2x minus 1. So this is less work here. So it's 3 times 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus 1, which gives me 3 minus 6 sine squared x minus 1, or 2 minus 6 sine squared x. So what am I trying to do? Well, I want to find whether two things are equal. So I've got 15 sine x minus 20 sine cubed x is equal to 2 minus 6 sine squared x. I'm going to set that equal to 0 and get a cubic. So I'm not saying that we look at a cubic and know what to do, but we, we know that we've got everything in terms of one variable, so we have more options with how to solve. All right, if we want to solve a cubic, what can we do? Well, if we think back to the start of level 3 calc, we could use the factor theorem on this, and we could play around to see if we get um, nice numbers. So we could, we could look at what happens if we chuck in 1 or if we chuck in 0. But if you try that, you'll find that we don't end up getting any nice factors. And we're probably not going to because we're doing a trig problem. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do, um, do this with the graphics calculator. And from there, we're going to get our general and particular solutions. So let's let u equal sine x. Then we've got this equation. 0 is equal to 20 u cubed minus 6 u squared minus 15 u plus 2. We're going to put that in our calculator and we're going to solve it. And we know that we should get three um, solutions because it's a polynomial of degree 3. We'll have either one real or we'll have three real. And it turns out that we get three real solutions. So we get u equals 0 0.9680. We'll call that u1. u2. The second root is 0.12952. And the third root is this one here. Okay, so there's no elegant way to do it. You've just got to use your calculator doing that for you. Now, we know that u is equal to sine x. So we've got three really simple equations to get graph, uh, general solutions for. And the third one is this one here. So as usual, alpha is the inverse sine of that, the angle whose sine is that, the principal value. That works out to be 1.3171. Um, 0.12988. And the third one is 0.12988 and 0.92326. So we're just about there. General solutions for each of these will give me these. x is equal to n pi plus negative 1 to the power of n times 1.3171. The second one, x is equal to n pi plus this. And the third one, now we can plug in some values to generate those six solutions. I'm running out of time, but if you do that, if you plug in n equals 0, you will get x equals 1.3171, x equals 0 0.12988, and x is equal to negative 0.92326. And then if you put an n equals 1, you'll get out these. And what you need to do, I think, is just go back and have a look at the graph, and you'll see that they match up to exactly where they should be. And the 1... So what we need to say here is that that gives us nearly all the values for x between um, 0 and 2 pi.
but I'm missing one of them and I've got 20 seconds and I haven't got time to figure out which one. So I'm hoping one of you can leave me a note in the comments telling me which one we've lost. So we'd probably go back in here and we'd go n equals negative 1 and we might also go n equals 2. So let's see which ones we have managed to find. Well we've got this one here, 